Hey brother, welcome back. Thanks for being here. In this video, I want to talk to you about journaling. On one of our group calls the other night, the topic of how to journal came up. And I just wanted to say a few words about my experience with journaling and what's, what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. So for a number of years, I kept a journal. I, I felt like it was a good idea to try to get my thoughts out, to try to uh, have some insights, to try to find out some truths and uh, and I recognized at some point that I was keeping a journal for someone else. I wasn't really keeping it, it for me. I was, I was keeping a, uh, a diary that I was okay with someone else reading. You know, if somebody picked it up, they would be able to read it and not be bothered by my thoughts or anything that I said in there and, and that it wouldn't uh, cause any problems. There wouldn't be any conflict or confrontation. There wouldn't be any hurt feelings. Uh, essentially, I was afraid to share what was really going on in my head and put it down on paper for fear that somebody else might come across it and read it. And and that didn't serve me very well. You know, uh, dear diary, today I went to the supermarket. You know, dear diary, today I went to the dry cleaners. That that's a That's a log of your daily activities, but it's not particularly insightful into your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors. Um, and what you want for yourself in your life and it wasn't wasn't particularly helpful for me and so I stopped I stopped keeping a journal and then uh, when my relationship imploded when my marriage imploded and I got to the point where it looked like we were gonna get a divorce um, you know I went on a journey uh, which I am still on to get clarity to get clarity for myself about what I wanted for my life and what I wanted for myself and and uh, hired a men's coach and joined a men's community and and traveled around and, and went to retreats and walked and talked with men and and all through all out that uh keeping a journal has been been critical critically important to getting insights on what i want for myself and what i'm thinking what i'm thinking what i'm feeling uh and just just being able to understand myself better and so as part of that renewed commitment to myself and renewed commitment to journaling, I decided that I was going to just brain dump, brain dump everything that kind of came along, uh, not be concerned about grammar or punctuation or handwriting, uh, to not worry about whether or not it had a transitional sentence or it had a, a coherent beginning or end, uh, to not even really worry about what the context and con content and subject matter was but just to be able to write things down and I've, I've done that while I've, I've read through snippets of books uh, I've done that when I've been on the, the walk you know with a dog uh, and I've done that um, you know just sitting every morning uh, drinking my morning coffee getting myself recentered for the day basically brain dumping whatever is going on because you know, when we wake up in the morning, we're, we're kind of like a computer that's been rebooted. We're, we're kind of starting the day, a new day, but we're also carrying forward a portion of yesterday. And we have thoughts about that, everything that we've processed overnight. And then when we wake up in the morning, we've got all these, these ideas, all these thoughts, all these feelings and emotions going on. And we need to be able to, uh, you know what I mean? We need to sort through those things and kind of understand ourselves and what, what it is that we're thinking and feeling and, and wanting. So that's what I've I've done and I want to encourage you to do the same thing and I want you to remember that nobody's grading this this isn't English class this isn't uh, a red pen isn't coming out and and your words aren't going to be slashed through and judged and it really helps to uh, not label or judge or assign meaning to any of it and in fact I have learned that some some of the the most uncomfortable things that I've said the most uh, seemingly brutal things that I've said things that that would horrify someone if I if I said them to them um, those things have been most beneficial to me because when we hold in our frustration our resentment our anger our disappointment our disapproval when we tell ourselves that we can't say those things then we are disowning a part of ourselves. we're not really being honest when in fact we're holding on to that almost as if we had ingested uh, toxins like a you know a, like we party too much the night before and we need to throw up but we're holding it all in you know we're, 
holding those toxins in our body, those negative thoughts and negative feelings and negative emotions and 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 we're not releasing them, we're not processing through them. When we when we deny them, when we resist them, we actually uh, cannot process them because we can't address anything that we haven't acknowledged. And, and in order to acknowledge it uh, means that we have to accept the fact that we think that or that we feel that. And it doesn't mean that we need to stay there forever or that it's always going to be that way or that means that we're a bad person. It just means these things are running through our head and we're feeling a certain way about them and we need to be able to get them out on the page and be honest about them, honest with ourselves about what's going on so that we can then decide for ourselves what happens next that, so that we can process through them, so we can move past them. And that doesn't start until we accept uh, that, that we're thinking them and don't judge ourselves for that. And so writing that stuff down on the page has been instrumental for me. It's been, it's been therapeutic. It's been healing for me. And it wasn't really until I started to be that brutally honest that, um, that, that the most progress began to happen for me in my clarity of self and understanding of what I want for myself in my life. And being able to clear out all of those uh, toxic thoughts and negative um, things have all have made room for other uh, perspectives, other thoughts. Uh, you know, it has allowed me to breathe deeply and know that I'm okay, and that even though I have expressed those thoughts, I'm still here and I'm still me. And and if anything, I have a better relationship with myself and a better understanding of myself. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I, I hope that you will take this to heart and. Uh, keep your own journal. I highly recommend that you do a written journal. Write it by hand. Uh, there's something about slowing down and taking your time. Again, don't worry about handwriting. If you have sloppy handwriting or messy handwriting or whatever, whatever word you want to use to describe your handwriting, however you feel about it, you might have some shame about the way that your handwriting looks. But uh, this is, again, just for you. It's not for anybody else. It's not going to be graded by an English teacher. And so uh, I just want to encourage you to write that down for you. And, and uh, if you want to keep a digital journal, maybe you are afraid that somebody's going to read your notes, you can keep a digital journal these days with passwords and things like that. Just know that there's something to be said for um, when we're typing with our thumbs and we're thinking about what we're saying, it kind of slows us down and it creates a little bit of friction in being uh, very fluid with our thoughts and being expressive with our thoughts and being able to kind of, you know, brain dump or, or vomit before you know we're overthinking things so so that's why I encourage you to write it down to just uh, be very fluid with it and don't worry about uh, you know how it looks or how it gets presented or, or whether or not it's, it's technically correct just go ahead and just uh, get this stuff out because we're talking about um, you know we're talking about the thoughts in your head that produce the feelings in your body which produce the reactions you know that we re the things that we react to which become our habits become our actions and, and that produces the results in our life so so that's what i have for you today brother thanks for being here thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later